starting. All right. So again, um, maraming salamat sa inyo oras. So let's proceed. But before anything else, before we go further and further, I'd like to first um, introduce myself. Yung sa mga hindi nakakakilala sa akin. Okay, so my name is Maria Rebecca and everybody calls me Miss Aisha here at ICSA. Okay, I finished uh, recently my Master in Business Administration from Anglia Ruskin University from the UK. And my bachelor's degree is actually in education, secondary education. I majored in biology. And so imagine from a pre-med course and then shift ako into business. Uh, related course. So, wala namang imposible as long as you really work hard, guys. No. So, I finished this course from Benguet State University in the Philippines last 2004. So, kwento-kwentahin nyo nalang ako ilang taon na ako. <laughs> I currently work as the academic manager of ICSA Kuwait since 2015. Okay. So, we don't have much time to ask everybody kung ano yung mga things about yourself, but you can always approach me if you need any help. Some of you, I already know them. Okay? Uh, marami sa inyo dyan mga kilala ko na. Alam ko na yung faces. Okay? Um, oh, uh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, we have one person here who could not speak uh, Tagalog and cannot understand pure Tagalog. So, we have to bear with that. Yeah? Okay, so, since we are talking about... Um, reviewing and going into class, I'd like to share some quotes from Aristotle here, which says, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Ibig sabihin, kahit matas yung pinag-aralan, pag wala namang manners, if we have a high, uh, you know, high level of education, but we don't have manners, we don't have character, then it is of no use. Para ka rin hindi nag-aral. It's like you did not go to school or you are not educated at all. That's why we have that saying that they are educated but not learned. Kasi walang, wala silang tinatawag. They don't have what we call as etiquette. Okay? So, I want you guys to take note of this etiquette because it's very important. Okay? It's very important to make everything smooth. That's what makes society... Uh, that's what makes society... Uh, yes, sir. mute mo, Miss Bibing, ang iyong uh, mic, please. Have other order for the water and stuff. Send them, I will pay on time. Miss Bibing, Miss Bibing, nasa na si Miss Bibing. Pakimute mo si Miss Bibing. Nasa na si Miss Bibing. Miss Bibing. Okay. Muted na po. Muted na po. Yeah, thank you. All right, so... Ganun din kayo, Miss Ma'am. Hello po. Ay, pakinit lang yung mic natin, ha? Speaking of, speaking of etiquette, no? We have to follow some rules and regulations which we call at netiquette, okay? We call it as netiquette. So, be, be on time, guys, okay? Uh, we tried our best to be on time. We have to, we started uh, our meeting at 3 o'clock. And by next week, I hope uh, we can go straight directly to that as well. Okay, so you have to come prepared. Ibig sabihin, I, I, I'm expecting you guys to have at least uh, your modules beside you, okay? Or yung soft copy ng modules nyo, at least you could access them anytime. So when I refer to a certain page or a certain topic within your modules, nandun na, okay? So make sure that you come prepared. Do not just come here for to just waste your time. Okay, and your effort. You have to at least come prepared. Let your modules be beside you, ready to be accessed. Okay? And please mute your mic if you are not about to say something or you are not asked to say something so we could go and run smoothly. Okay? And turn on your camera so at least I can see that you are there. Okay? So, wag tayo mag-off ng camera. Ha? You have to on your camera, please. Can you do that? Kaya ba natin gawin yun? Paki-on naman ng camera. Everybody should switch on their cameras, please. Yes, thank you. Okay. Iba hindi pa nag-on ng camera, please. I will remove you from the class pag hindi ka nag-on ng camera. Okay. Kasi ayaw nyo rin naman siguro na ako ay magsasalita rito. Tapos I also have my camera off. So it's, it has to be an interactive uh, session. So you have to switch on your camera so I know that you are there. Okay? Miss Rosemary, ilang ka hindi open your camera. So para alam natin na naandiyan kayo. Come wait because I'm fixing my computer. Wait, okay. Okay, please on your camera. 
everybody. So I can see your beautiful faces and handsome faces. At least I know that you are there. Okay. Oh, Miss Emmy, nakabukas ang camera mo, pero baso at plato akin nakikita dyan. Ano man, ang mga tissue? Ano yun? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Binaayos ko po siya para humarap sa akin kasi naka- Ah, ka. okay. Sige. So, ayos-ayos yun natin. <laughs> Harap niyo, okay? Please, Miss Alma, Miss Manilin, can you open your camera, please? So, I can see you guys. Okay? Kasi we, we are in an online class, so we have to focus focus tayo. At kung naka-open yung camera niyo, dagdag yon sa hiyat ng focusing. Okay? Para makita ko rin kayo. So I can actually see you guys. Okay? Alright, what else? You have to dress appropriately. Okay? Because this is also a class. Okay? That means you shouldn't be wearing something which is very revealing if you're a woman or either may either, either gender. Not well. So, at least um, it will help you Alam naman natin, dahil sa mga, uh, for those who are AB Psychology students, you know what I'm trying to say. That how we dress up is actually going to, you know, it will influence the way you behave. Diba? That's why when you go to sleep, you have to wear uh, clothes that will make you fall asleep easier. And when you're in class, you have to wear clothes that will help you feel that you are really in class. Okay? That's why we see some schools, they require their students to wear their uniform when they are online, in online class, even in online class. Okay? So, please, Jo Marie and uh, Marie Chris, please open your cameras. Huh? I'll go back to you later. Okay? And if you have a very noisy background, kindly please make sure na nakamit yung inyong um, mic. Wear headphones if possible and know what's behind you. Baka, uh, there might be some underwears hanging at, at your back. So check out, check out your background, okay? And please be attentive so that if I ask questions, you can immediately answer. Or, or if you want to ask questions, you can ask the question right away. Okay, so paki lower your hand na lang muna. Please lower your hand. Those who have uh, clicked the button on raising the hand. So at least later... If I tell you to raise the hand, then you can again raise the hand. Okay, can you do that? Yes. Please lower your hand by pressing the raise hand button once again. Okay, just lower the hand. Okay, try to figure out how to do it. Okay, and let's try our best to be respectful at all times. Okay, so it's not that everybody or there's somebody here who knows everything already. Okay, I myself still learns a lot of things every day. And we, we would not like to assume that we know everything already. We are here to help you and to help each other. Okay, there might be somebody there who is a, a master of that as well. So, kailangan tulungan, ta, tulungan natin si classmate if the person is uh, having a hard time. Okay. And if I can make any mistakes, please let me know also, okay? All right, so let's just sum up what is expected of you and of the session. So first thing, our time is 3 to 5, and Saturdays, we will be having two sessions, okay? Inshallah, we'll be having two sessions. So next Saturday, we'll continue. Um, what is going to happen is that first five, five, first five to ten minutes is that I'm going to give you a little very short, short lecture para ma-refresh your mind nyo if ever you have left that module already or that certain topic. Then I'm, I'm going to pose a question and then we'll try to answer that, okay? So those who came late, Ms. Madria had made a group chat wherein you can see me from there. Send your message there. If I say send privately, you have to send privately. Okay? Sparola kapiahan. So we will not be copying each other's answer. Then you have to answer if I say that you have to answer as a group. Okay? And this serves as a record of your participation as well. Okay? So the topics are randomly picked from, uh, from your modules. Okay? Randomly picked from your modules. So hindi siya in, in order. All right, it's not in order, it's just random. Okay, but first and foremost, I'd like to share to you guys some uh, ways on how to answer the questions in a multiple choice exam. Okay, the problem sometimes if, uh, if you're taking the exam, you're not reading the question properly. You, you, you're not reading between the lines. It's, it seems like when you answer the questions, you already have an answer directly. The reason is because you did not suspend your judgment. And when you finally uh, have seen the question, the first thing you have to do is to pause. Okay? Try to suspend your judgment. Okay? Do not immediately jump into an answer. 
Okay? So the first thing you have to do is to have critical thinking. You have to first suspend your judgment, read the situation, okay? Understand the question first bago kayo sasagot, okay? Because uh, the exam is very difficult, I know that, okay? We know that. And you can ask some people who already took the exams and quizzes previously. They will tell you that it's not easy, okay? So the, there are some strategies on how you can get a good grade. Okay, first thing you have, the, the moment you have uh, seen the question, you have to pause for a while and think, ano ba ang sinasabi? What is the question talking about? So do not give an immediate answer. You have to suspend your judgment. Okay, the moment you saw a word, ah, I know this. Okay, because the tendency is some of us, we we try to memorize some keywords. Uh, if, the, if I see this word, ah, this is the answer. It should not be that way. Okay, because some questions are tricky questions. Okay, you have to read the question and try to understand first. You have to comprehend. Take, uh, take some contextual clues. What is really talking about? Sometimes the idea is in between the lines. Okay, so you have to first gather the evidence on the question because the, the answer is going to rely on what is the question. Okay? So your opinion doesn't matter here. Do not take your opinion as a as a, a judgment, a base of your judgment. Okay? And then anticipate. That, that means what could be the answer without the option. So what you have to do, don't look at the question, uh, uh, the options. Merong A, B, C, D. Huwag muna titignan yun. You have to take a look at the question first. Don't look at the the options first. So the first thing you have to do is look at the question, try to understand. And then, what could be the answer if there are no options? Okay? What could be the answer without the options? Ganon dapat yung takbo na utak niyo. Okay? You have to think that way. What could be the answer to this question if there are no options? Okay? Then, that would be your first instinct, yung first answer niyo. Then, after that, you have to go to step number three, removal. Now you go to the options. See what are those possible options there that are just, you know, something to just bother you or to confuse you. Okay, sometimes the answer seems to be A, but actually it's B. That's why you have to do step number one and step number two. Okay, then once you have already two options, you do now the leveraging, which means... Once you are down to, for example, there are four options, you already remove two questions, I mean two options, because you are sure that that is not the answer. That's the time you're going to choose between two. So that means you have to make a decision. If you only have two options, that means you already have 50% possibility of getting the correct answer. Do you, do you agree or not? Hmm? Anong gusto yung option ninyo? You have, kasi pag, if, there are, if there are four options, that means you have only 25% uh, possibility to get the correct answer, right? So first you have to eliminate two so you'll get a higher chance to get the correct answer. That's why you have to do removal and then leverage, okay? So it behind that means you're going to first think what the question is all about. Then you anticipate what could be the answer to this if there are no options. Then choose among the two only, the best possible answer that you think. And that's the time you choose only between the two. So you'll get a 50% chance of getting the correct answer. I hope I'm making myself clear into that one. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, if you don't, if you have any questions, just uh, type in into the group chat. Or kaya naman, you can always um, type here in the messenger. Okay, so moving on tayo, guys. So let's try this question muna. Try muna natin. Let's apply that uh, C-A-R-L, Carl uh, method. Okay, so this is the question. What did we say the first, uh, first step is? to do some critical thinking. Let's think about what the question is all about. The question says... Which of the following is not a direct concern of economics? So now, you already have learned what is economics, okay? And what is economics about? We already have learned about it. So you already have in your mind what is economics, diba? Therefore, you can remove things that are not related to that. But go back to the question and anticipate what if we don't have the choices here, okay? Okay. What if we don't have the choices down? Okay, what if we don't have these choices down here? Halimbawa, wala itong mga to. What could be 
direct concern. Ganun yung gagawin ninyo. Okay? So, you already have an answer in your mind even without the options. Then, you're going to do removal. So, what are the things that you have to remove? The things that are not related. Now, let's go back to the question. These questions requires you step number one, mostly. Okay? Which of the following is not? So, now, can you please send me your answers in the group chat? Yala, send your answers in the group chat, please. Text nyo. Uh, type your answers, please. I'm waiting. Ayun, may sumagot na. May sumagot na. Okay. Okay. Oh, bas basahin na maigi yung question. Read the question properly. Oh, meron na agad wrong answer. There's already somebody who gave, uh, two people who gave wrong answers already. Hmm. <laughs> Can I type my answer? Bakit? Wait, ma uh, but my answer is letter D. I'm, lo I'm looking okay. for, for this chat message. Sige, hanapin mo and mute your mic please. Para okay. So lahat na ba? Everybody had already key in their answer? Okay, most of you had given the answer as letter D, medical record. And some of you have answered scarcity and some of you has answered uh where's the other one okay some of you had answered scarcity now the question guys remember is not okay ano yung, ano yung hindi daw? so it means you did not read between the lines okay ano ba yung not directly concerned okay the proper answer here is letter d it's not directly uh, related or concern of economics because economics is all about scarcity. It also is about the choice or decision making on which resources you're going to give up, which are you going to use or not. So you're going to talk about resources. Okay, so the correct answer is D. So before you give your answer, you have to read the question two times. Okay, so you got the wrong answer because you did not read between the lines. That means you did not do step number one, which is critical thinking. First, you have to understand understand you have to suspend the judgment you did not give your judgment to be suspended you have to first pause for a while before you give your answer the reason is because we want to think about mag-isip muna tayo before you go to the next question in fact you have two minutes uh, one minute per question uh, average so therefore use the 30 seconds or 40 seconds to think and then use the last 10 seconds to click on your answer. Okay? Para, ano, para ma-increase yung inyong chance of getting the correct answer. Okay? So, first question pa lang yun, you already have a mistake. The reason is because you did not do critical thinking. So, it's very important, guys. No, It is very important. Okay. So, isipin natin lagi. We have to think about it all the time to be a to pause your judgment. Okay? Alright, so moving on. Moving on tayo. Okay. Mahabo si Ms. Rosenda Lobo. Okay, let's first discuss some um, lecture review on the nature of economics. Okay? Just a very uh, fast uh, review on the nature of economics. So we have learned before, you have learned, and it is also there in your module that says it's economics is all about scarcity. And scarcity is one fundamental problem because our needs and wants are never ending. So economics is focused on scarcity. That is, we don't have a unlimited resources. Our resources are not forever. So there's no forever in economics. It's very limited. It's not limited. Huh? I mean, it is unlimited. It is not unlimited. Therefore, walang forever. It's never ending. It's always there's something which is with the limit, okay? Because our needs and wants has also never ending. Therefore, there's a problem. So you think about your salary as an example. Oh, you think about your salary. And then you're going to think about your expenses, okay? And then you think about your needs and wants. So you will see directly, you will immediately know that there's a problem, right? You will immediately know that there's a problem, uh, you cannot buy all the things you want, all the things that you want, and you cannot buy all the things that you need as well because there's this scarcity. And that's what economics is all about. You're going to make decisions on which resources you have to sacrifice. That is what you call as opportunity cost. Okay? Right. 
Ba't parang may nakanta? May naririnig akong nakanta. Sino kaya yun? Hmm. Okay. Moving on tayo. Pakimute ang mic natin, guys. May naririnig akong nakanta. <clears throat> okay. So, economics is the, is the science or the scientific study which deals with how individuals and society generally make choices. So, that means economics is all about making choices. Okay? Economics is making choices. It's all about making choices. So, uh, one has to critically analyze choices that will have the least sacrifice and greatest benefit. For example, you want to buy a phone. So, in order to buy the phone you like, you have to sacrifice your, maybe your meal for the day or your, your allowance for a month, etc. So that means you're going to make decisions at the least sacrifice, but you want to get the greatest benefit. yeah? Or you're going to perhaps make a decision on which type of mobile, which is the cheapest that will suit your salary, whatever. Anyway, the bottom line is you're going to make a decision. And that is what economics is all about. Okay? And what do you call this? The one that you have least sacrifice and greatest benefit. So I have given you here, guys, some clue. I have made the text in gray, gray, uh, pink color. Okay? I have given the text in pink color. So now, what do you think is the answer? Okay, in your answer sa ating ano, sa ating messenger. Key in your answer. Remember, you have to do critical thinking first. Okay? And then, Mm, you anticipate what could be the answer here without the options. Ano kayo sagot dito pag wala yung mga options? And then, you're going to now remove those that are not actually part of the uh, options until you have only two options and that's the time you're gonna make a decision. To make your decision uh, go as much as 50% probability to get the correct answer. Okay, so one has to critically analyze choices so that you would make the least sacrifice and greatest benefit. If you are listening carefully, I have mentioned the answer at the beginning of the sentence before I discuss this slide. I have given the answer. Okay, so answer is, okay, dadalok pala, only two of you have given their answers. How about the others? Oh, tapos na one, one minute maybe. Hello, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, Ms. Mine is letter C. <laughs> letter C. Both uh, A and B. Can you key in your answer in the messenger? Meron tayong messenger, Miss Bibing. Di ka ba dyan? Di ka ba sa ka nilagay Miss Badge? Doon sa ano? Sa, sa kapiksa po. Chat. Okay. Nakalagay doon, economics review. Group chat. Ginawa ni Miss Badria. Sino yung ano? Sino Wala yung po ako ganun. Coordinator. So, international bachelors lang po. Wala din ako noon. <laughs> Miss Badge, Miss Sonia. O, i-message nyo si Mr. Mr. Elchi, si Miss Badge, o kaya si Miss Sonia para madagdag kayo sa group. Okay, Miss anyway. Miss Bibing, country po kayo? Sir, ako wala. Hindi ako Qatar na po, sir. Qatar. Sir Elchi. Ako po. Qatar po. Kaya kita, ma'am. Kaya kita, ma'am. Okay, thank you po. Kaya make message. Hindi mo na ako, Okay. Alright, so let's continue. Okay, kanina, oh, ang, ang sagot dito is, may nasagot ng tatlo. O, sagot, may nagsagot ng C, B, and A, B. Okay, the answer guys is C, both A and B. Okay? You're going to do some opportunity cost. So you're gonna think about what you're gonna sacrifice. That's your opportunity cost. Because you're going to think about the scarcity and you're going to trade off. Okay? So, it's both A and B. So, the answer is letter C. Okay? So, ilan na, ilan na yung tawang sagot nyo so far? Okay. Sana nililista nyo rin yung sagot nyo. Ha? I hope you're also writing down your answers. So, at least you can uh, review those questions. Okay? And then you go back to your modules later. Okay? Oh, so, the answer is opportunity cost. It's the cost that you're going to uh, think about to give you the least sacrifice and the greatest benefits. That's called opportunity cost or also known as scarcity and trade off. Okay. So, moving on tayo. It's a reality that scarcity is true, no? And no one has everything. No one has everything. Hindi talaga pwede mangyayari yan. Okay. 
And there's a so shortage of goods to satisfy human wants. Okay? Kahit yung mga pinakamayayaman sa mundo, even the richest person on earth could not get everything because he cannot, uh, he cannot uh, afford to just take all the food for himself. Okay? Halimbawa, take, let's say, for example, Bill Gates or Elon Musk, they cannot just buy all the food available on earth and then keep it for themselves. That's not possible. That's why we say that scarcity is a fact of life. Okay, You have to always make uh, decisions on how what you're going to sacrifice to get the other. Okay, So that's what economics is all about. And in, 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 in economics, we have our very own scientist and economist. His name is Gerardo P. Sikat. Okay. So, Google nyo na lang, guys, if you want to know more about him. But in your module, he was also mentioned. So, I took an effort to also mention him. So, if you have read your module already and you have learned about him, let's see if you have learned about him. Okay, according to Gerardo Sikat, economics is a scientific study that deals with, oh yeah, dali dali na question. How the people spends income in their consumption, how the government develops the scarce resources of the country, how the government regulates the flow, income, flow of income, or how people make choices. Okay, so please key in your answers sa group chat. Please, please type your answers in the group chat. <clears throat> hmm. According to Gerardo Sikat, ibig sabihin, the question is, according to the person, not according to your impression or not according to your opinion. Okay? So, you have to go back to your module. What did he say? Okay? So, that should be uh, the attitude when you answer the question. You have to do some critical thinking, look at the question properly. Okay? And read between the lines. So, I think there's a anonymous decision naman dito. Everybody had so far um, opted for letter D. The answer is letter D. Okay? So the answer is letter D. How people make choices. Basically the same thing as the general definition. Okay. Okay. I hope there's no question to that. Okay. Moving on tayo guys. Let's move on. Thank you for keying in your um, answers. So we know already that there are some economic resources. So these economic resources, guys, could be found on your module in your module one, page seven. So if you are following, as I've said in the uh, before, so una, you have to have your modules beside you so you can easily find that page I'm referring to. So you can easily follow. Okay. So I hope that you have your modules beside you or somewhere that you can easily access. Okay, so let's talk about the factors of production. Okay, factors of production are actually the economic resources. Okay, and they could be tangible and intangible. Simply lang naman, it's just very simple. When you say tangible, it's something that you can see, you can touch, you can feel. Okay, and some resources are also called intangible, something that you cannot actually see or touch, like the knowledge that your teacher is giving you, okay, or the services that you get. Okay, from your internet service provider or from the salon or whatever services that you get, okay, that you cannot actually see. All right, so they could be tangible and intangible. So I think that's pretty easy. Okay, society uses its economic resources, as we know, to provide goods and services for human needs, right? And the amounts of money society has to spend is also called an economic resource. It's also a factor of production, the amount of money. So you have also the labor, the land, capital goods. And of course, your entrepreneurial ability is one of the intangible resources and factors of production. Okay. So now we have learned quite a bit scarcity about scarcity and economics. Alam na natin yun. The scarcity means that we don't have a never-ending forever resources. Therefore, we have to make choices. And that's what scarcity is all about. We have to do uh, economics means you have to make choices. Now, you can see here in these options, guys, there is a combination. It shows here in this combination, okay? In this combination, you will see uh, the distribution of goods and uh, the following as food and clothing. Okay, halimbawa, meron tayo dito food and then we have clothing. 
can you tell me what is the implication of the table? O dito, we got zero. And then we have 20. Here we have for food, one. And clothing, we have 18. Dito naman, two. And here we have 15. Three here, 11. Four there, and six here, five here, and zero. Can you tell me what is the implication of this table? Ano ba ibig sabihin nito in real life? What does it mean or the, what is the application of this concept or this table, let's say this table specifically? What is the application of this concept? Anyone? Anyone? Of course, it's obvious that this is a combination of two goods that is possible to produce, okay? But what is the implication? What is the meaning? What, what, is, uh, what can we get from this table? Anyone who wants to give their idea? You can raise your hand so I can call you. Hmm. What do you think is the implication? Ano ibig sabihin nito? Considering about what you have learned in scarcity and economics. Yes, Miss Manuela. Do you have any idea? Hmm, naka-concentrate ka eh. Mukhang naka-focus. Mashallah. Okay. <laughs> there is no right or wrong answer here. Ano lang natin, yung ating pagkakaintindi. Ano what is what is the implication of this? We just apply what you have learned in economics and about scarcity. Anyone who wants to try? Don't be shy to say your, your comments or what do you think is the implication. Any idea? What is the implication of this? I think you are you are not confident enough to say your your <clears throat> okay. Okay, si Emmy. Emmy. Yeah. Emmy, Joy. <laughs> Emmy yeah. Joy, yes, Miss Emmy Joy. Go I ahead. Think, yeah, I think ma'am, in order to produce um more uh product for the other goods, you need to less to uh, you need to less producing the other goods. Yes, so in order for you to produce more clothing, mm -hmm. then you need to produce less of the food. Exactly, exactly. That is the, the one that I'm expecting you to say. So as you can see here, guys, if you want to produce more clothing, you have to sacrifice some for your food, right? If you give some on your, your food, then you have to deduct some on your clothing, right? If you want to add more on the food, the more you're going to deduct some from your clothing. That's what it means, okay? So that's called scarcity because you don't have a forever um, resources. And then that's economics because you're going to make decisions on what to sacrifice, okay? And what you're going to get as a benefit for your sacrifice, okay? So that's what it means, okay? That's the implication of the table. That means that in reality, the only way we can produce more of anything is to produce less of something else, okay? So the only way we can produce more of anything is to produce less of something else, okay? Yun yung ating implication. By the way, you can check this one on page eight on your module one. Ah? So I already have written, I have seen that one. I have written already the page number there. Okay, we are actually talking about the law of diminishing returns, okay? You can take a look at and jump on page two of your module one. I'm gonna give you one minute to read. So if I ask a question, then you can at least answer me, okay? Try to read it, guys. I'm going to give you one minute to read um, page 10 of your module one.
Okay. <clears throat> oh, balik tayo. Anyone who wants to tell me what have you understood about the law of diminishing returns? Anyone who wants to? <clears throat> Oh, nobody wants to tell me the idea. At least. Wala, ayun yung magsalita. You can also talk, guys. So at least, so at least I will not be the only one talking. Diba? Anyone who wants to tell me their ideas about the law of diminishing returns? Any ideas on or whatever you have understood about the law of diminishing returns? Meron ba? Gusto magsalita. <clears throat> Magsabi lang. <clears throat> okay. Ayaw niyo eh. Sige. <laughs> Not a choice. <laughs> All right. Moving on tayo, guys. Uh, so let's take a look at this as uh, an explanation of the uh, law of diminishing returns. Okay. Well, let's take a look at again the very good example of our needs and wants. Everybody wants clothing. Everybody needs food. Okay? So let's see, for example, I have uh, how, ilang ba kayo? 23. So uh, 13 people, 13 among you, I, I have assigned to make clothing for everybody. And the rest of you, yung 10 people, I have assigned them to make food for everybody. Okay? So now I say, "Oi, we are getting, we are getting. I mean, you are growing. We are growing, and we need more energy. So then I will ask those people from the clothing department to come to me and join some people in the food department, so we can produce more food. So halimbawa, I'm going. For example, I'm going to remove three people from here, so they will just become ten. Tapos here they will become thirteen. Okay. Now." In the law of diminishing returns, it means that even if I remove 10 people there to produce more of this, actually, you have deducted something from the clothing. So therefore, the product is getting lesser anyway. The productivity also gets lessened. Okay? So in short, for the sake of giving the, uh, let's, uh, let's say, for example, here, okay? The cost of giving up the production of some units of a particular good such as food in order to produce some units of another good such as clothing. Okay, pag ito yung tinanong sa inyo, if this is the question, okay, what is your answer? Okay, you can key in your answer. You can key in your answer sa ating group chat. Again, before you give your answer, you have to read between the lines, understand the question, look for some keywords. And in this case, the keyword is the underlined word. Okay, we are talking about the cost. Okay, the cost. Mm. Mm. We are talking about the cost of giving up the production of some units. Okay. May habol pa. All right. So, the correct answer here is opportunity cost. Okay. We're talking about the law of diminishing returns. When we talk about um, giving up some production of some of the units, like like a particular good, for example, yung food, para lang makapag-produce tayo ng clothing. That is the law of diminishing returns. Okay? But the question is asking you about the cost. That's 
that's why we said before you answer the question, you have to do critical thinking. First, you look at the question and what is it actually asking about, okay? And then you're going to anticipate what could be the answer here if there are no options. Then you're going to just choose between two, two options and that's the time you make a choice. So you get your answers at a 50% probability of getting the correct answer, okay? I hope uh, that's clear. Huh? Mm. So anyway, um, let's move on. So the law of diminishing returns says that as more of the same input, the corresponding uh, increase becomes smaller and smaller. It means that we have deducted some of the workers to make it the clothing, the dressmakers, and the amounts uh, of the others I kept constant. That means... This, there are still 23 people to feed or 23 people to give food. So it is constant, okay? Now we have here uh, a keyword and that's called constant or fix, okay? So Yan, I could suggest that this word could be uh, used as your keyword if it talks about the law of diminishing returns, okay? Okay, I hope you understood. Now the, the question earlier was asking about the cost. So now you might think that the answer is letter A, like what you did. Most of you has answered letter, well, what the first answer, most of you has answered letter A, those the last na question, kasi you already thought of the concept of the law of diminishing returns, which is actually what is it about. But the question is about the cost that you're going to give, okay, when you are going to do this, okay? Kasi nga nag sacrifice ka, you have sacrificed some of your. Uh, resources from the clothing to give to the other resources but that doesn't mean that uh you know that doesn't mean that ma yung input mo yung increase mo will become smaller and smaller supposedly okay the corresponding increase becomes smaller and smaller you're expecting it to be more but actually hindi okay so that's called the law of diminishing returns Tinanggal mo yung, yung ano, you have removed some people there to work on the other side for your need. But actually, there is a diminishing return for that because it becomes smaller and smaller. Okay? All right. So, when it talks about the law of diminishing returns, you can see the word constant and fix are there. And that would be your keyword. And that's the time you're going to give your answer as the law of diminishing returns. Okay. So, we already have understood the law of diminishing returns. Now, let's see and take a look at this um, situations, okay? You have to choose, alin ba dito, which among these situations is a situation that you can apply the law of diminishing returns. It can be illustrated. Um, the question is, it can be illustrated. So, which of these situations can illustrate the law of diminishing returns. Okay, once you have a final answer, you can key into our group chat. Hmm. Remember, in the previous slide, I have given you a clue. <laughs> I have given you a clue. Oh, and some of you already got it. Ayan, very good. Uh, so far, at least. Uh, ayan, okay. So far, lahat naman tumatama pa. So, so far, everybody is getting the correct answer. So far, okay. <laughs> okay. I hope you did not copy the answer of your classmate. Ha? <laughs> okay. O, lahat sila ganun, ganun na rin sasagot <laughs> Okay, so the answer here is, what is the answer, guys? Letter C, keeping all the factors constant, every additional unit of fertilizer causes a diminishing rate of additional unit of output, okay? Oh, uh, ayan. So, somehow, at least, oh, siguro naman makaka-90% na kayo sa economics. Okay, let's take a look at the graph. Okay, I hope that you have been reading about the graphs, yung mga graphs ng economics, nakakaloka, di ba? So anyway, when you talk about the graphs, um, and then there's a graph. So you have keywords here, guys. Question is, the law of diminishing returns is shown in the graph of a, of a production possibilities through, ayan, so graph, Okay. 
ano naman yung production possibilities natin. We have seen uh, in the example of the production possibilities, ano yun? We have the production possibilities of food and clothing. Okay? And if you're going to make a graph, now dito, hindi na kayo tatanungin na graph. So you should already know how does a graph look like so when, you're talk, when you're talking about the law of diminishing returns. How does the graph look like? Dapat alam niyo na. Okay? So dapat alam niyo na because the question might, tell, might ask you, without a graph, how does a law of diminishing returns uh, show? Okay? O ano kaya tsura? Yun daw tanong. Ano daw tsura ng graph ng law of diminishing returns? How could it be? Okay, sagot. Ano sagot nyo, guys? You can key in your answers in the in the group chat. <clears throat> okay. So the correct answer is Concave graph. Okay, concave graph. Maalala nyo, take a look at your module. Take a look at your module on page 20, on your module 1. Nandun yung graph ng food and clothing. Okay, that we have discussed. Okay, ang kakita nyo, we have also that in the previous slide. That we have 20 on the clothing and then we have 0 on the food. And then you remember at 1, uh, we have uh, 18, I think, that one. O, pag na siya. So, makikita nyo, pababa siya. Okay? So, it is concave graph. Okay? So, I hope you have seen that one at I hope nakita nyo downward sloping is not a correct answer. Okay? So, the correct answer is concave graph. <laughs> okay. So, you will encounter questions like this, guys. Tatanoyin kayo, what would the graph look like? So, you have to take a look at and, um, all the graphs and ano ba yung mga concepts on... Uh, you have to take a look at the graphs that are in your module and see how does it look like. Is it the, going to the right? Is it um, going to the left? Or is it concave? Ganon. These are the questions that you might be encountering as well. Okay? And the graph is not there. They will just tell you. Okay, they will just tell you. All right, let's continue. So there are stages of development when it comes to the economic development of countries. So what do you think is uh, the Philippines uh, included? Is the Philippines included in the developing country, newly developed or underdeveloped country? What do you think? Okay, so I'll give that question to you and think about it. Look at some sources, Google nyo na lang kung saan ba ang Pilipinas. Is it developing, newly developed, or underdeveloped na? Okay? So, basically, development is what we are looking at when you talk about economics. So, development economics tend to agree that in the different stages of the country, there are common goals to be achieved. That means, if you become the president of the Philippines, you might be thinking about what? Number one. Increase in per capita income, the increase of income of per person in the nation, okay? And the equitable distribution of income and wealth among individuals and regions, which is very difficult to achieve. Balance foreign, foreign exchange and, of course, full employment and or development of its resources. So, ito yung mga basihan. These are the basis of the development of countries when it, term, when it comes to their economics, Okay. So, I hope that you can mention one if they ask you. Can you give uh, some goals to achieve in terms of economic development? So, at least you should know one or two of this. Okay, guys? So, if you are going to be asked, ano yung mga uh, common goals? So, this is common goals to achieve so that you'll have an economic development. So, that means that economists, economists are looking at this to see if you are a developed, underdeveloped, or newly developed country when it term, in terms of your economy. Okay? Alright, question tayo. Question tayo, guys. According to statistics, okay, question is according to statistics, okay, according to statistics, yeah. the Philippine natural resources have started to be depleted. And the, what does it mean by depleted? What does it mean by depleted? Paubos na. It's getting finished. Yung mga resources daw na ating Philippines. Okay? Due to the increase in population. 
Okay, what does it mean? Because the increase of population means more people to feed, more people to use resources. So therefore, according to statistics, the Philippine natural resources have started to, to be depleted due to the increase in population. Okay, which of the four common economic goals? Okay, so we have already one. What should be the priority of the government? What should be the priority of the government? <clears throat> ano sa palagay nyo ang dapat priority ng gobyerno? Hmm. Okay, you can gain your answers, guys. According to statistics, lalagay ko dito para to stats. So, according to stats, ano sagot nyo sa according to stats? Okay. Yes, Miss yes, Mr. Jesse, you can key in your answer in our group chat. If you're not yet included in the group chat, you can ask Miss Padria, Miss Sonia, or Mr. LG to put up. <clears throat> o para nababasa ko yung mga isip nyo. Okay. Lahat kayo, D? All of you answered D? Um, only four people sent in their answers. How about the others? Please participate. So at least I know what runs in your minds. <clears throat> hmm. Only five people answered. How about the others? Masagot naman kayo dyan, guys, because you're not already talking. So at least type in your answers. <laughs> oh. Okay, somebody, okay, for, first few people had said D, the others had said C or B. Okay, wala sasagot na A, nobody will answer A. Hmm. <clears throat> Para lahat meron na, so everybody already had a choice. I mean, all the options had been chosen. Okay, so if there is no if there is no option, what could be your answer? Yun yung una iisipin nyo. That's the first thing you have to think about. If there are no options, what should be the answer? Okay, then once you have the options, you have to choose which one is the best two. And then you give your option. That's the time you choose. A or D, okay? Alright, remember that we're talking about the population. So that doesn't make any sense because, um, okay, let's give first the answer better para ma-discuss natin. So we can say, okay, so the answer, guys, is balanced foreign exchange. Okay, the reason is because for, number, for letter A, increase in per capita income does not decrease the population. Okay? And that is the problem, the population, di ba? Equitable distribution of income is just same thing as that in letter B. It doesn't decrease the population. It means the population is the problem here because the population has to be fed, has to be closed, di ba? And then full employment is, is still talking about income. Therefore, when it comes to population, um, you just have to focus and prioritize on the balance or stable foreign exchange. Kasi pag bumagsak na yung ating um, uh, value of the money, that becomes a problem. Okay? So, if, if, the, if the value of the currency goes down, even if the people have money in their hands, that would be worthless. Okay? Lalo na pag nagkaroon ng inflation. So, that's why you have to first, the government should be first prioritize the balance foreign exchange. Okay? So, that should be the priority. Okay? Now, keyword there, guys, is population. Huh? The keyword there is population. I hope um, you're taking notes. <clears throat> okay. Let's continue. 
Okay, so economic methodology. Dito naman tayo sa economic methodology. We have positive and normative economics. Okay? So basically, pag sinabing uh, positive economics, what we observe in the world, and this is a fact, okay? It's the reality. Okay? And it is very objective. That means, comparing it with normative economics, these are matters of opinion. Okay? These are just matters of opinion. They dwell on the judgments and inferences on an idea or thought. So, it is subjective. So, pwede mong sabihin ng kahit ano. Okay? Anybody can just say anything about the economy and that's called normative economics. Okay? But somebody who did not uh, uh, he did not uh, know anything about economics okay, or doesn't even understand economics cannot give an objective comment about the economics diba? or about the economy. So that's why it's called positive economics and normative economics. So I hope you, you have, uh, uh, you can see the difference here. Hmm? It's very easy naman. I think it's not a big uh, issue. Anyway, uh, we have an example here. Okay. Positive economics, you would say, national statistics reported 25% of the population is below poverty threshold. So that means you have a statistics here. There is a report. There's a study that has been conducted. Therefore, it is objective. It is positive economics. Yeah, normative economics, anybody can just say, all Filipinos are poor. Okay? Oh, so it is just the opinion of somebody. You can read more of this in your module one, page 13. Okay? So that's positive economics compared to normative economics. Okay. So let's take a look at now. Let's move on now to the theory of demand. Okay? Theory of demand. What is demand? Anyone? Anyone who wants to tell us what is demand? I demanding. Gano. Ano ba ibig sabihin no? What is demand? Can somebody tell us what is demand? Anyone who wants to read from your module what is demand? What is demand, guys? Are you still there? Or am I still here? O kung ayaw magsalita, at least key in. If you don't want to talk, at least key in there in the group chat what you want, what is demand. Hmm. What is demand? Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Yes, Miss Rosenda. Um, what is demand? Um, demand is what we need. Everything that we need. Okay, thank you. It's about all the... Uh, okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, this is this demand, as uh, Ms. Rosenda said, is the what the things that we want, the willingness that we want to get, diba? Okay, so this will express the willingness of a consumer to buy goods or services at a given price level. Okay, so if you have given this price for this product, for example, and they want to buy it, well, you can say that that is their demand. Okay. The amount of food and services that households are willing to buy. So when it comes to demand, there is a price that is being talked about. Okay, So there's the willingness. Okay, There's the willingness. Why do we have this willingness? Because again, going back to economics, you have to decide according to your whatever resources you have. Okay, If your salary is just this much, of course, you would just be willing to pay, which is according to what your salary can afford. You're making some decisions. yeah. So it has something to do with your willingness to pay, willingness to buy, to consume a product or <clears throat> uh, a simple service. Okay, the reason is because there are many factors when it comes to demand. Okay, you have what are the factors here? You have money. Titignan mo muna kung may pera ka. You're gonna take a look at first if you are willing to pay that or you can afford to pay that. Your income, how much is your salary that you can use to pay that certain good or services. Okay, and also population. As we have said, it 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 can um it can affect the resources. Okay, population are the ones who are using the resources, therefore it is a factor. And of course, you simply taste and preference. As simple as that, your taste and preference, you just don't like it even if it's cheap or it is affordable because it's just not your preference, okay? And of course, you have a certain price expectation, okay, for a certain product or service, okay? And if it's too much, you are not willing to pay 
quantity or buy that product or service. Therefore, there is no demand on that. Yeah, And of course, the prices of related goods. So therefore, when it comes to demand, there's a price that is going to be considered the willingness of the consumer to buy the goods and services. So remember, it's not just good, but also services at a given price level. And there are many factors that is um, affecting the demand, okay? So there are many factors that affects the demand. And you already know that practically speaking, even if you don't uh, study economics, okay? Kahit ng high school, even a high school student would understand that these are factors that, uh, you know, affecting demand, okay? So let's say, for example, you have here a mango. So winter season doesn't have this. So therefore, prices are different in winter and in summer. So it's a seasonal fruit, okay? Now, if you see the mango and it has a 2KD500 per kilo, convert nyo na lang dun sa, uh, just convert it um, on your local currency, wherever you are. And uh, let's take a look at this if it's 500 fills per kilo. So your buying preference, diba? your buying preference will determine the what? Your buying preference will determine the what? Your decision to buy the product. How many kilos you're going to buy? Okay, Mr. Muhammad, how many kilos are you going to buy if the price is 2.5 kd per kilo? Mr. Muhammad, where is Mr. Muhammad? Are you still yes, there? Yes. Ha. Ah. How many kilos are you gonna buy if the price of the mango is 2.5 kd per kilo? Maybe one kilo. How many kilos? Huh. If it's 2.5 kd per kilo, how many kilos are you gonna buy, for example? Half or maybe one? Huh? You will half buy one kilo? One. Yep. Okay, maybe half kilo. How about if it's half kd? It's only 500 kilos. How many kilo are you gonna buy? Five. Five? Yep. Okay. What made you decide on half and what made you decide on five kilos? Uh, the price. The price, exactly. So <laughs> that is the demand. You're going to see the factors that affects the demand, right? Your willingness to buy the product, it is because of the price of the certain product or services. So we know that if the price is low, you're going to buy more, right? And if the price is high, you're going to demand less. Okay, that's the theory of demand. The higher the price, the lesser the demand. Okay, and what is the other one? The lesser the price, the higher the demand. You got it? Is, is it clear, guys? Is it clear? I hope that's clear. Can you say that? Can you say now what is the basic theory here when it comes to the theory of demand? What is the basic concept? Anyone who wants to say? How about Miss Jamaica? It is? Pakibasa na lang, Miss Jamaica. <clears throat> uh, the lower the price, the higher becomes your willingness to buy more. Yes. Thank you, Miss Jamaica. So yon, di ba? So the higher or the lower the price, the higher becomes your willingness to buy. So as you can see here, if it's high, balik tag yung arrow. The arrow is uh, uh, turned upside down. So they are uh, what you call as they are oppositely related, okay? Or, or we call it as inversely proportional, okay? Inversely proportional. I think you understand what I'm trying to say naman dito. It's very easy. So just remember, it is inversely proportional. So magkabaliktad. Okay? That means, if the other one goes up, the other one goes down. Okay? If the price go up, you will demand lesser. If the, if the price goes down, you will demand higher. So it's inversely proportional. So you can see that in inversely proportional relationship, okay, the arrows would be at the different side. It goes to the other way around. Okay? Ganun lang. It's inversely proportional. So it's very practical and it's very easy to understand. That's the theory of demand. Okay? So in the theory of demand, you will see a portion wherein you have a given function and it is based in mathematics. Okay? And you have learned in your algebra things about the linear equations and they have applied this by giving you 
a linear equation which is QD is equal to D minus MP. Okay, and you have here where QD is the quantity demand, intercept of the line or autonomous demand uh, when the price is zero. So this sets the uh, balance there. And of course, a slope of demand curve, the rise and run of this one, and market price of the commodity. So this is the factor that affects it, okay? The price of the commodity, okay? So um, don't make it very hard on you guys. Just uh, keep cool. Just look at the equation and that's it. tension. Don't get tension with the equation, okay? Let the equation do its job. <laughs> the equation is there for you so that you will understand what's happening, okay? So that's your guide on how to understand what is happening only. So don't think about it uh, thoroughly. Huwag nyo nang stress yung sarili nyo dyan. But you have to understand how the equation works. And that's what we're going to do today. So here, I want you guys to do the same and follow with me. If you have your module and you haven't answered this one, answer it right now, Okay. Let's answer it together. All right. So here the given is uh, quantity demand is equal to 1,000 minus 10P. Okay. So the 10 has already been given here, right? Na, nabigay na yung 10. Okay. The M supposedly is uh, already given. So this is 10. And the P is the price. And the price here is actually this area. Okay. Kita nyo naman here. It's in price. The price is here. Okay. So lahat to, they're all in price okay so we'll just we'll just replace the 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 p here with the price that is in here accordingly okay so now what is the quantity demanded or q if the price is p okay can you do that so just just do a little calculation here konting uh, konti lang naman guys okay so let's take a look at the first one which is um to get this one, we are, we are trying to calculate this one, okay? And how to get that is you just replace it with the formula here, okay? Okay, so gagawin natin. We're going to do that, okay? Okay, si baby may sinasabi. Okay, so let's take a look at this. 1,000 minus 10 multiplied with the P. And what is P here? Ano yung P dito, guys, na una? Sinasagot natin yung 5, okay? So, you know already that this is what we are answering, okay? We are answering this one. So, 5 yung P natin. That's where we got the 5, okay? So, what is the answer? Let's continue answering this one. Okay, let's continue answering this one. 1,000 minus 10. Okay, 1,000 minus what is 10 times 5? It is 50. So, what's the answer, guys? <clears throat> <coughs> oh, 950. So therefore, the answer here is 950. I hope that's clear. Okay. So let's go to the second one. If the price is 10, okay, if the price is 10 naman, what could be the quantity demand? Okay, so let's take a look at this. What would be the quantity demand? We'll just do this. Okay, anyone? Uh, to make it clear na, isa-isahin na natin para ano, lahat na. So, 1,000 lang guys, minus 10 times, what is that? 10. Okay, so 1,000 minus 100, so the answer is 900. So, the answer here guys is 900. Okay, let's take a look at the other one. So, 1,000 minus 10 times 15. Ano ang 10 times 15? 150, right? So, ano sagot? <clears throat> 850. Tama ba? Yes. Okay. So, it's 850. Now, let's take a look at 20 naman. It's 1,000 minus 20. Sorry. 20 times 20. Okay. Sorry, 10 times 20. Okay. So, what's the answer here? 1,000 minus... Mm -hmm. 100. Oh, sorry, what is this? 200, right? So it will become 800. Ganon. So 800 naman dito. Ganon. So, okay. And of course, the last one, 1,000 minus 10 times 25. So this is 1,000 minus 250. So what is the answer? 750. So you have here 750. Okay. 
I hope you're following. Okay. So we have to finish the job. That means we have to we have to make the graph. Okay. We have to make the graph following the table. So there is a table here. You have here the P as the vertical axis. That means ito yung price going down here. Okay. And then you have the quantity demand as the horizontal axis, which is the Y axis. Okay. So Let's plot this one. Let's just make a, a, a simple plotting, okay? So you have to make an estimate. An estimate tayo. On the highest na ating price, what is the highest in price? It's 25, right? So we have to make a, an estimate. We have to make an estimate. Estimate lang tayo. Ba? Estimate lang tayo, guys. So we are going to make a, a, a plotting. We're going to plot here. So let's take, for example, uh, let's make a blue color here. So let's make it. Okay, so we have here 25 as the, ay, and, 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 let's change, sorry for that. Okay, so we have here 25, 20, 15, 10, and then 5, and then you got the 0. Okay ba? Are you following, guys? Are you able to follow sa akin? And then down, we have 950, 900, 850 to 750. So, of course, we start with zero. Then here we have 750. Okay. Tapos 850. And then 900. Tapos 950. Okay. Uh, so, where would be the first dot go? So, saan yung una? So, if you have, if you have, if you have here 5, okay. and then you have here 950, so saan natin ilalagay yung 5? Ito si 5, tapos ito si 950. So, we know that here we have 750, okay? 750 tayo dito. Okay, and the last one would be the 950. Okay, so dito naman si 950. So therefore, our first dot, our first dot would be uh, when you have 5, the, the y-axis is at 950. So dito siya. Are you following, guys? Masyado yata mga. Yes, ma'am. Oh, baba ko ng konti dyan. Okay, then if you have 10, then you have 900 on the quantity demand. So, we have here 900, and then we have 10 higher, a little bit higher. And then, next we have 15 and 850. So, this is 15 and 850. Approximation lang ha, kasi wala naman tayong graph pa dito. Sinunod lang natin yung nasa mulyo. 20 and 8, 8, 800. So, this is 20, and you have here 800. Then, we have 25 and 750. So, we have here 750 and 25. Okay? One, you guys. So, now, if you're going to plot, you're going to plot this one, the line would look like this. Okay? Okay? So, yan yung quantity demand graph. Yan yung ating demand graph. So, as you can see, from top going to the, going to the right. Okay? Ayun. So, is there any questions? Is it clear, guys? Claro ba? I hope it's clear. Okay, so... Hello, ma'am. Ano pa yung tawag sa graph? Ay, this is called the demand pala, graph. Downward, what I mean? Oh, sorry. This is... Uh, downward slope. Downward slope yung ganyan po. Ano yun? Sorry, again? Repeat, please. Ayong... Yung bali... Yung tawag po sa kanya, alimbawa, yung downward sloping siya, upward sloping. Uh -uh, this is called a downward slope. Okay? This is called a downward okay, slope. Uh -uh, and you can see that it is uh, from top. Pababa siya o pag ganun. Di ba usually pag ganyan dapat, di ba? Eh kaso pag ganito siya eh. Okay? So ganun. So it's a downward slope. Okay? Ayan. Thank so, you po. Nilip ko na ha. Okay, so now, moving on na tayo. May oras pa ba? 30 minutes. Okay, last na siguro to guys. 
Okay, consumers are most likely to buy more goods and services as price decreases. Okay, consumers are most likely to buy more goods and services as price decreases. So, alam na natin. So, we already know that, right? We already know this, that consumers are most, more likely to buy more goods, okay, if the price decreases. Okay, so the goods are high if the price is low. Okay, and the higher the price, the lesser quantity demanded for goods and services. Okay, and of course, taking note of that, we know that there are factors. That is the law of demand. There are factors. We already have mentioned many. Okay, like your income, okay, population, what else, your preference, your taste, and, and so on and so forth. So that is the theory of demand. Okay, it's inversely proportional. And at the same time, there are factors affecting the uh demand okay right so let's move on siguro isang question pa maybe we'll have one more question before we uh do some final um thingies okay so the based on the law of demand or ceteris paribus hmm, price change causes change okay so ilalagay ko dito sa question na based on law based on law of demand Para alam natin na ito yung sinagot ng question. So, we know that this is the question that you have answers. Law of... Ano sagot niyo? So, price change causes change in quantity demanded illustrated by... Okay? Hmm. Okay, guys. Okay, so nakasagot na ba yung iba? O, B, D, ano pa? Nakasagot nyo. Okay, what is your answer, guys? Ano sagot nyo? Nakasagot na ba lahat? Everybody happy in their answers? Yeah, there was no voice because I mute myself. I was I was on the phone. Okay, may natawa. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So the answer here is movement along the demand curve. Okay, because you can illustrate. So again, we have to apply what we have learned. You have to first think properly, think critically. You have to read the questions twice. Try to understand what's the question all about. Then you try to anticipate what could be the answer if there are no options. Then you have to try to choose only two among these two question, uh, two possible answers and that's the time you make a choice. Okay? So now the question is price change. The price change is caused by the change in quantity demanded illustrated by the movement along the demand curve. Remember the demand curve is the one that we have done earlier and that, that is the change that has been illustrated, the price, diba? That means the price goes down, the demand goes up, 
Okay? So, ganyan. So, I hope that that is clear. Any questions, guys? O, oh, may nasagot pa ng shift and all, ha? O, oh, sige. No problem. Basa lang. Okay? So, we have here um, with us our CEO, Mr. Amir. I think um, he wants to see you all guys as well and he wants to share some uh, words and maybe ask some questions. So, he is joining us right now. Yes, yes, I'm here yes, now. Yes, Mr. Amir. Okay. So, Hello. Hello. Kumusta po kayong lahat? Hello, guys. Uh, Miss Aisha? Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, I think Good you need to on. mute yourself because there is something uh, buffering sound in your mic. Yeah, no, not from her. It is someone else. Who's having this buffering sound, guys? There was somebody having buffering sound. Okay, now everybody's muted. Okay. Now, how I can talk to you? You will not be able to talk to me because you're all mute. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be interactive discussion, okay? It's not that I'm going to deliver a speech and you're going to just listen it, okay? I want you to talk to me, okay? Participate in this discussion. This is something very important, very important things that I'm going to discuss. Uh, there are a lot of things in our life we able to obtain we able to gain, we able to have it, which we can have it many times, several times. If we lost it, we can get it back again. There are a lot of things. For example, you lost the job. Maybe you will able to get better than that job. You understand? Likewise, maybe you lost your wife. <laughs> then what will happen? See, see, Mr. Arnold is <laughs> he's, he's smiling. Eh? <laughs> so you might be able to get better than that, right? Isn't it? How about if you lost the husband? You might be able to get better person. See, they're smiling now. Okay, what I'm trying to tell you that there is a replacement of everything. There is a replacement of everything that we have in our life but there is one thing which is very important that you cannot measure with any value or any price. And that is something which we are very careless. And you know what is that? Is there anybody could tell me what is that? The we really don't care about it, okay? And that is something which we can never have it. What is that, Anuyon? Knowledge, sir. I know, what is that? Knowledge. Knowledge? Uh, no, you can have a better knowledge even. Education. Your knowledge, uh, some, you can get a better education even. Maybe the, the education you was having it, maybe that was not uh, what you call it. Uh, uh, it was not fitting to the, to the to the needs or, uh, or requirement or uh, uh, this one. But you, when you get a, some better training, so you're able to build up your personality in a better way and also there is something else. Time. 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 I think it's time. Yes. Time, time. That's right, that's right, absolutely right. Hmm. You know that Bible talks about time, the importance of the time. And do you know that the Quran also talks about the importance of the time? Because this is really something that can never come back. Today, right now, it is 5th of February, 5th of February, 2022. You might have a lot of 5th of February in your life, but you will never get it back 5th of February 2022 anymore in your life. You understand? So the hour which is past, you can never have it. You could have it likewise, but not the same hour which is past. You can never have it. 
And this is the something that we really don't care about it. We, you know, I have, I heard my, I heard by myself, people saying that, well, I found this one to have a good passage of the time. So I can easily pass the time. <clears throat> Why are you playing card? Well, I have nothing to do. I'm just trying to burn my time, burning time. You know, likewise, there are a lot of people, a lot of people, they spend a lot of time in something which gives them nothing, in something which gives them nothing. And it's not, it's not only once in their lifetime, it's, it's, it's something that happening always, always. And you know what? I have seen in my life, the people who does not give value to the things which God Almighty have blessed you. This is a blessing, by the way. Let me tell you that there are many people, those who are in the jail, there are many people, those who are in the hospital, in the ICU, or I mean, try to go and ask them about the value of their time. Ask the person who's on the, on the bed, of, bed, bed of death, and he knows that I have a cancer. He knows that I'm going to be, might be surviving for a few hours or a few days or something and all. Ask that person the value of the time. We usually, as a human, we learn after losing. When we have it with us, we don't care about it. We have our parents with us, many of us. We don't really give much respect or much time as much as we should do. But when they will pass away, then you will realize, then we realize that I should be caring about that. I should be caring. I would have given some time to her. I would have talked to her, okay? I would have called her every day to ask how she, if she have eaten well or not. And then likewise, likewise exactly it is that the, the, I mean, the value that we're giving to time. I mean, many of us spending hours and hours on the internet, on, on the social media, on watching news, which, give, which, is, which is not related to them at all. I mean, are you really, are you really worried about what's happening in you, you, uh, in Russia or or in some other places? I mean, I mean, there are some, there are news which are not related to us, but we're spending hours and hours and hours on that. So remember that, remember that, the time is the blessing of God Almighty. You can use it or you can lose it. Use it. It will make you something, lose it, it will destroy you. What is that destroyed you? What does it mean? It means, see, remember one thing. There is always two positions. Nothing is the third one. There is always, either you win it or you lose it, okay? Either you gain it or you lose it, okay? Or you succeed or you fail. There is nothing in between, right? <clears throat> Are you up or you're done? There is nothing in middle in between and all, okay? Either you're able to become something in your life or nothing, okay? That's how, that's how it is. The people that you are seeing around you, those who are most successful, okay? Try to read the history of their life. Try to read their biography. Try to read that how they spend their life you will find the more one of the most common thing into them it is they really give value to their time they they plan their day they plan their month they plan their year they make sure that they're not going to waste even one single minute of their time and they able to become something they able to become something i mean Jose Rizal's life is in front of us, 33 years old, young guy. He able to achieve a doctoral degree, become philosopher, become poet, become doctor, okay? And become the hero of the nation in 33 years age of his life. Well, I mean, try to, 
try to read his life and show me a single day which he have spended for something which gives him nothing. Utilized? Yes. Likewise, I mean, the peoples around you, there are, there are, a, lot of, there are a lot in the Philippines you will find. There are a lot of successful people in the world. But try to read their life. Try to see they have given the value to the things which God Almighty have blessed them. And this life is a blessing, this blessing. Utilize it. Make it sharp yourself. Design your future. Design. Remember one thing. <clears throat> that with our own capacity, with our own capacity, no one of us can change our future. No one of us can change our future. But one thing we can change, one thing we can change, and that is what a habit. Ado abide, adopt good habits and your good habits will change your future. And one of that good habit it is to take care of your time. Take care of, prepare your do list every day. Even though if you are not working in the office, you are just working in the house, still prepare your do list. Put a goal, goal, always goal, your goal to achieve. You're not going to work for the rest of your life there as a housemate, right? One day you will be, you, every one of us have some dream, isn't it? That dream should be your priority. That dream should be, your, put, keep that, that Keep that dream or that goal always in priority list. How to achieve this? How I can achieve this one? And if that will be always in your mind, believe me, believe me, one day you will be able to achieve. According to the research that 70 to 80 percent of our total time in the day and night, we are talking to ourselves. Do you know that, guys? I don't talk with my wife as much as I talk to myself, or I don't talk to my and my children or my anybody as much as I talk. I as much, I mean, we don't spend much time with others as much as time we are spending with our own self. You understand? So, self enhancement is very important, and self enhancement will sharpen your future self-enhancement will be possible if your auto-suggestion is connected to your goal. And what is that auto-suggestion? Auto-suggestion means self-talk, talking to yourself, reminding yourself. When you are sitting, our mind is gone somewhere else. We think we we're thinking somewhere else. That somewhere else should be connected to your goal, your dream. And if that will be there, you will be able to achieve. You will be able to gain. You, you will be able to make a history of yourself. Yes. So guys, that is the short message that I wanted to give you that to take care of time, don't take it as granted. Don't take it as granted. You will be questioned for your time where you have spent it. It's a gift. I will give you an example. One of your best friend, one of your best friend brought a cake in your house, knocked the door, holding a cake in her hand. Okay, you open the door and you took the cake from her. She gave a present to you the cake, very nice, beautiful cake with good wrapping and all everything. 
and then you took the cake from her, you put it aside, and then you kick it with your feet in front of her, throwed it like this, kicked it. What do you think about what will be the feeling of your friend that what you are doing to the gift that she brought for you? Will she not feel bad? That's exactly what we are doing with our time. That's exactly what we are burning our time. Not utilizing it for something that we should be doing it at all. Understand? And the people, those who really care and give respect to the time, I have, been, I have seen them being respected by the society. People respect them. Everybody respect them. They try to look for, to get an appointment just to meet this guy, just to have a five minute with this person because they given a respect to the thing which God Almighty have gifted them. They did not kick it out, that gift. They given a respect, honor to that one, okay? So this is something very important, guys. I want every one of you to please take it seriously. I first thing I appreciate, I really admire that the step you have taken for educating yourself, this is a great idea. You know that how many of us here in the Middle East, around 800,000 Filipinos in the UAE, around 900,000 Filipinos in the Saudi Arabia, around 300,000 in Kuwait, like around 400,000 in Qatar, okay? Many of us is from Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. I can see that some of you is from, uh, from Qatar as well and all. So you can see now how many of you from these 100,000 people, those who are working abroad, who's continuing their education. You are blessed, okay? When the blessing comes, when the blessing of our God, our God Almighty it comes to you, to us, it doesn't mean that he will just send somebody with the, with the what you call, with the, bag of, with the bag of gold or diamond or money in it and lock the door, hey, take it, this is from God, open the door and take it, this one, nothing like that. He will put good idea in your mind and you will work on it and that is a blessing of God Almighty. He will let you meet with, with a good friend or you will able to get good teacher who will guide you or you will able to get good friend who will take care of you, who will give you idea. I mean, he will open the reason, the source reasoning, he will open it for you. The door of, the, the door of opportunities, he will open it for you. Understand? So this is one of the door of the opportunity. So take care of this, make sure that you really give respect to your decision, your determination that you have started your bachelor degree program. Make sure that you're going to end it, okay? In a timely manner, in a timely manner. Don't take it forever, okay? That you have started in 2021 and graduating in 2030. And then put a, put a timeline, put a timeline that I need to, I must be marching in the commencement exercises in coming 2023, in coming 2024. Put a, put, a, put a timeline, target line, target date, and see how many subjects are remaining, how many subjects you should be com completing it within a one month or two months, okay? So work it accordingly, prepare, plan. That's called planning, plan it. And then inshallah, if you plan it this way, the day will come, you will be one of those who are going to march in the graduation. You will be one of those. And you will be one of those who are able to obtain the bachelor degree, who are able to graduate while working abroad. Because not everybody who while working abroad able to give this gift to their self, okay? This is something for you. No, no one will be able to take it from you. This is something from you. All what you are earning it daily, okay? That's not for you. That's 
you can see it after 15th of the month, you don't have it much from that, that income, that salary. It is gone already back in the Philippines, right? Okay, back, gone back to the family and all. So what's left with you, it is the one you are spending for yourself in educating yourself. Okay, that is for you. And inshallah, this will bring a lot of success. One of that opportunity that it will open a door for you to enter in a master's degree program. Okay, then doctoral degree program. I have seen the ambassador of Kuwait, the previous past ambassador of Kuwait. He was an OFW in Saudi Arabia. OFW in Saudi Arabia, working in a company as a content writer, working in a company as a content writer in Saudi Arabia. But when he went for vacation, he was OFW, when he went for vacation, there was civil service exam, okay, for foreign affairs offices, officers and all. So he applied for the exam and he passed the exam. And then he started his service in that way and he become one day ambassador of Kuwait. He's right now, he's in America right now, appointed there uh, as, a, as a, what you call it, um, I believe next to the ambassador. So the thing it is that every one of us have that abilities. It's not that he was eating something different, that's why he's become, or he was having different opportunities and all. No, the same oxygen, what you breathe, the same oxygen he was breathing, same what you eat, rice and pancit, the same thing he was also eating, okay? Only the thing he given respect to his time and he given, he given dedication uh, to his goals in his life, okay? So that's what it is, applying the same formula, same pattern, same way, we can also achieve that success. We can also become something in our life. All right, guys, so that's all. So all what I have talked today, okay, we are here 18 people, okay? All we have talked today, I believe it's going to click someone of you and you will really able to prove all what I have discussed today, and you will able to make a history, you will able to make a remarkable changes in, in your life, okay? And then take a step. Remember guys, just last thing, okay, just last thing, remember that the best time to do something that is today not tomorrow because tomorrow you haven't seen and not yesterday because that has passed already. Don't leave yourself in yesterdays. Most of us, that's what we do mistakes. We spend a lot of time in our yesterdays or last month or last years. Forget about that, okay? Let's learn lesson from that, that we should, we're not able to do it, let's do it right now. Take step today. What is that step I should be taking it today? draw just at least a timeline for your graduation and work into that one. At least you can do this one. Draw a timeline, put a bulletin board, put a bulletin board. If you don't have bulletin board, any cardboard, okay? Anything, put it in, in front of your bed, in front of your table, in front of your chair, in front of where you spend more time, put it that one. There you're going to put your reminders, okay? Make, draw, make one bulletin board for you. Make small office for you. These things, you can do it today. That's not going to take much of you, okay? Much of your time or much of struggle and all. And draw just one line and see how many subject you have. If you have 20 subjects, put 20 dots there on that line. Put 20 dots there on that line. And then plan it how many days you're going to take to reach from one dot to another dot, then another dot to another dot. How many days you're going to take it around and then work into that. That every one of us we can do. Okay. So I hope, inshallah, one day you will meet me and remind me about this message. And that will be that will be payback to me for my struggle or for my talk that I have talked to you. I will be very happy seeing you successful person here in this life and life after here, inshallah. Thank you very much guys for your time.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Amir. Salamat, guys, for your time. Yes. So, we yes. already have finished our review uh, schedule. We'll continue next Saturday for another uh, continuation of that. So, hopefully, we'll be able to co cover all the other remaining modules. So, thank you for your time. Maraming salamat for participating. Okay. And we are very happy that you have joined. Maraming salamat for exerting an effort that we can have a chance to see you, talk to you. And of course, um, hear you. If you have any questions, please let us know. If you have any problems, please let us know para matulungan namin kayo. Okay? So, we'll see you next uh, uh, Saturday. Uh, any last words uh, to say? Message, Ms. Badria, Mr. Elchi. Hindi pa pa si Mr. Elchi. Oh, umalis na rin. <laughs> umalis na rin yata. Okay. So, kung wala na kayong tanong, guys, message na lang kayo sa ating group chat. You just message us in the group chat. If you have any messages, any comments, any questions, any concerns, please do not hesitate to let us know. Okay? So, again, thank, thank you, you so much for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.